Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you, please invite your friends and today we are going to explore more of the true stories which happened long time ago where Allah he sent his prophets to drink from the fountain of youth and by the way my grandfather he drank from it and now he is one day old the fountain of youth is a true story in case you think it's not actually we have a clear evidence of it all of you you watch the parrot of the Caribbean how Jack Sparrow he go and a bunch of gang looking for the fountain of youth and how even the evil British government were trying hard to make him find them or find the fountain for them. I will not be surprised if Trump is behind this or CIA. Those trozy story stories, all of them they are documented and nobody can deny them. We have a movie about them and the reason they are in the movie because they are true. Now, in the story of Jack Sparrow, they did not tell you all the truth because all the truth is coming from the book of Allah. Allah know best, as you remember. Always remember that. Put, put, put that between your eyebrows if you have any. So this fountain of youth, which is so, 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 so good, and all of us, we wish to drink from it, Maybe one day, Alhamdulillah. We will go there and we will drink from the fountain of youth. And be, by the way, if you are a man, keep dreaming to reach that point because you will find like the tens of billions of women before you. Good luck. And if you try to go through, the nails are ready. You know, so like instead of living forever, you will die forever before you reach the fountain of youth. The only way to get there, I think, if you like dress like a woman. Uh, and I think now this is why Muhammad used to dress like a woman. So now let us go and examine the fountain of youth and where this fountain of youth is exist in the Islamic uh, mythology or Muhammad fiction stories. See, always when we show Muslims things, they will, show, will say to you, well, he's lying, he's lying, he's lying. You know, this is the answer for anything. If you show them a hadith, he says, this is a weak hadith, weak hadith, weak hadith. Anything, anything is embarrassment. It's in a, in, a, in a speed of light, it's a weak. And by the way, weak is accepted in Islam. It's not really. This is why actually it's written in the book because it is accepted. Otherwise, they will dump it in the garbage. You will not put it in the book. So in front of us, uh, this is a website. It's called At-Tafasir Al-Azimah, which means the great tafsir, which means this uh, website does not have uh, interpretation for the Quran, which is not the greatest, only the greatest. And here we have... This is the uh, tafsir written by Al Imam al Suyuti, and he is one of the biggest. Actually, I believe that this is Suyuti, he was really a genius. And I'm serious here. You know, forget about his belief in Islam, but obviously, he have a, his brain have a special uh, capability of, uh, of putting things together. But by his help, we are going to see how Islam is so stupid. This guy, actually, himself. He have a long list of missing verses in the Quran and the Muslim they go crazy when they see it and nobody can really debate him about it. He show you with evidence, with reference, how many chapters missing, not only verses. I mean, the whole chapter almost is 18, is gone. So here we have Tafsir al suyuti and now we have the chapter of the cave 18 and we have verse number 83. But before we read this interpretation, Let us see what the Muslims they say in their videos about the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Dhul Qarnayn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ We gave him power in this world. 
and we allowed him a path everywhere. And he went to the easternmost, he went to the westernmost. There are stories mentioned in the Quran about Dhul Qarnayn. He was a just king, he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He found people of all different types and persuasions. And then the final one that is mentioned, the final group of people, when he came to essentially a valley, there's two mountain slopes coming here. He found a group of people. They did not understand Dhul Qarnayn. Dhul Qarnayn did not understand them. In other words, this was a civilization that had no middle ground. In the good old days, once upon a time, before Google Translate, how did people translate from one another? There were people, intermediaries, who had traveled to both lands. Inevitably, you would find somebody who spoke Latin and Arabic, who spoke, you know, this language and that language. You would find somebody. Dhul Qarnayn went to such a faraway land that the language of those people and the language of Dhul Qarnayn had no middle ground. So Allah is mentioning this is a far-flung civilization. And here you see how this stupid story started. So those people they don't understand the language and he have no translator for them. And then a second after we will see that they are talking to each other. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many of you heard me saying stupidity is amazing. This is something you never heard before, right? Always stupidity is amazing. Amuse me, let us say. Uh, <clears throat> He just explained to you that this language nobody understand and no ground for it and no translator, correct? Well, then how this guy, they came and they spoke to him. How the Quran mentioned that nobody can understand what they are saying and he cannot understand what he's saying and they cannot understand what he's saying. And then it says here, until he reached the between the two mountains, he found before them, this is a trans super translation, a people who like they understand the world they can understand the world okay okay and then they said Zulqarnayn verily Jews and look a second ago you said you didn't understand the world a second after they said do you see the stupidity of this cult we just heard the sheikh I think I don't know this is Mufti Mink I don't know who was he we just heard him saying nobody can they, they, there is uh, every nation have a translator they, those people they, there's no translator because nobody knows their language so nobody knows their language they do not know the language of Zulqarnayn Zulqarnayn do not know their language and then uh, they said and then he said like what happened? And he said, and the Sheikh, he said at that time, there's no Google Translator. I'm so glad he acknowledged that because they might say that Google created by Allah. Here right away you see how the stupidity of this cult is, is, a, is, a, is a jumping machine. I mean, don't, don't even they notice what they just said? Like he cannot understand the world and they cannot understand the world. And then after a second, a second, they say to him, And not only they said to him, like, you know, like they explain things which is complicated, like those people, Gog and Magog, they are doing mischief in the earth. Shall we render uh, uh, this uh, tribute in order, etc., blah, 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 blah. And can you make a dam between us? A second ago, they were a bunch of ignorant, nobody even had their language. And now we are talking about building a dam. And then he said, Okay, Abdul, uh, whatever Allah he gave me, I will uh, do my best, uh, brother and sisters. Okay, let us build the dam between them. And then things will be more technical. They do not understand him. He don't understand them. And then he said, bring me a block of iron. How in the world they knew that he want a block of iron if he don't understand the word? But anyway, this is not really our topic. I just wanted to show you that when Yasser Qadi, he says, the standard narrative has narrative has holes. I say to uh, Yasser Qadi, it's not only the standard narrative has holes. 
All of you are full of holes. Your Quran is a book of holes. And how in the world Alexander the Great become a Muslim? In fact, the guy is a bisexual. I mean, this Muhammad, he made anyone he is famous a Muslim. If in that, if Muhammad was exist at that time, trust me, he will make a, 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 you know, a, a Trump a Muslim. Anyone, anyone come in his way, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Alexander the Great is a Muslim. All the books of history confirm that this guy, he is, he sleep with everybody. He sleep with men, he sleep with women. But he's famous. And there is a person from Syria, he wrote a book. And this book is about a man who wear uh, a helmet have two horn and this is why you see the Quran saying the person with a two horn I mean have you ever heard even this is a God he is telling us about a person who he sent yet his name is the guy with the two horn why he's a cow do even Allah knew the name of this person so now today we are you know we spoke before if you remember about uh, the stories of Moses and the fountain of youth. If you remember, Moses, he made a speech in front of his people and he says, oh, children of Israel. And the funny, by the way, they say Israel is not, you know, there's nothing is called Israel. This is Palestine. But the stupid Quran keep calling them children of Israel. Obviously, the children of Israel, they are Indian from America. I mean, even your stupid book keep calling them the children of Israel. So uh, uh, Moses, he made a sermon and he spoke to the children of Israel and he told them, I am the most, uh, uh, he asked them, who is the most uh, learned person among the people? You know, uh, someone's uh, asking Moses. Moses says, I am me. Come on. <laughs> me. Then Allah, he said to him, you stupid Moses, it's not you. Moses, he said, like, what? Not me? So Allah, he admonished Moses and he told him not to ascribe the, all the knowledge, uh, uh, not ascribe to all the knowledge to Allah only. Then came to the divine inspiration. He says, yes, one of our slaves in the junction of the two seas is more learned than you. And here, by the way, translation of the junctions of the two seas is Al-Bahrain. Bahrain, you know the country is called Bahrain? This is where it is. The funny, if you go and see where the Bahrain is, you will see that a Bahrain is connected uh, to the Mediterranean, which is very funny. So there is a person who live in the conjunction of the two seas, and that is Al Bahrain in Bahrain. And then uh, uh, Moses he told to him, "Okay, how I can find this guy so I can learn from him? How I can meet him?" Allah said to him, "Take a wheel, not a fish. Take a wheel in the basket, and whenever the fish is lost, follow it. Look, what the heck? Follow it." How you can follow a fish, a dead fish? She's dead in the basket, big wheel. By the way, at that time, I mean, you remember we showed you the story in the previous video, how there's a guy, he was 3,000 arm tall, and how he hold, uh, he, he, he walk in the sea, he don't swim because he's so big. He walk in the sea, and the sea does not even go to his knee. And then he hold the wheel, and he put his hand up in the sky and he did the barbecue to, uh, to the whale by the sun because he's so high, he's so close to the sun, brother. So Allah told him, take a whale with you, put it in the in the basket, and then when you lose the, the, the whale, uh, follow it, and you will find that place. So Moses, he, you know, set out along and he went with his attendant, Yeshua uh, 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 bin Nun. And here the funny part of the story. Bin in Arab, in, uh, in 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 the language in Arabic, it's coming from the Aramaic actually. Means sun. Noon is a wheel. I mean, look, okay, look. Even the the servant, his name, Yeshua, son of the wheel. Look at this, brother. I mean, obviously, there's no fabrication in the story. So Moses now he have to take a wheel with him, and then he choose a servant, and his servant. Later, by the way, he became a prophet, and but this is a different story. Uh, uh, his name is Yeshua bin Nun, the son of the wheel. Unbelievable, alhamdulillah. And then they carried with him the fish, which is the wheel, 
until they reach the rock and rested there until they reach the rock I mean is that how simple you go all the way from Israel all the way to Bahrain and then you find the rock there's only one rock in the way let me open the map you see I said to myself I'm not going to stay long but I don't know how to do that sorry um, I will start making videos just without going live by the way so to force myself not to stay long Because as long there is, you know, more ideas will come and things is endless. All right. So let us open the map of Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Hmm? So this is the country we are talking about. It's an, a little island in the, in the Persian Sea, which the Arab today, they are fighting to correct the Arab Sea. But all of us, we knew that this is the Persian Sea. Uh, they, they love to hijack anything. So suppose the Moses says he went all the way from Jerusalem or from, from Israel, wherever he was, and then all the way to Bahrain, brother. And then they found a rock. I mean, the story makes sense. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Okay, this is Israel, brother. And now, Moshe, how are you, Moshe? Are you doing good, Moshe? Okay. So Moshe now is going to take a route from Israel, brother, and he will keep going from here. And now he found a rock, which means the thousands of miles in the way, there was no rocks at all. I think it was a highway. Like Moshe keep driving, 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 driving his feet, you know, driving, 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 and then until he arrived to the rock. How simple is that, man? There's only one rock in the way. Very simple. I mean, true story. You see, if I am the one who made a book and I am saying I did this, how many Muslims will laugh at me and they will say Christian Prince is mentally ill? But as long their prophet is the one who said that, brother, it's a true story. So he keep going, keep going, keep going until he find a rock because there's no rocks at that time. No rocks, no rocks. The earth was rocks free, you know. Rocks happen after when my grand, 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 grandparents, the Arab, they start throwing rocks at each other. Like we are the one who created the rocks. We are the Arab, you know, brother. Yeah. Before us, the other Jews, Jews don't throw rocks. Actually, yeah, there is Jews that throw rocks too. You know, the story of David, he threw a rock, isn't it? Yeah. But maybe that was simple rock, like one rock exists in Israel, but there's no rocks. So Moses, Moshe, brother, he keep going, keep going, keep going, until he found the rock, bingo. But, uh, <clears throat> hey, Abdul, how Moshe, he keep walking, did he walk in the sea or something? I mean, you see now they built the bridge. This is a this is a newly built bridge between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, if you see it here. But this bridge was not exist. So who Moshe was able to walk all the way to the island of Al Bahrain? Like what? Okay, you know what? Let it go. Don't uh, you know? I mean, come on. Don't uh, focus on the details. As they say in the details, is the devil. So Moshe, he went all the way to Bahrain. How he went, Allahu Alam. How he did it, Allahu Alam. Allah knows best. How he crossed the sea, Allahu Alam. Especially they are walking, you know, as the story says. And they arrive a rock. Let me see if I can find a rock here. If there's any rock. I need to open Google, or, you know, Google Earth. Uh, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's do satellite thing. Uh, oh, here we go. There's a rock here. Is that a rock? No, there's no rocks. Like, what the heck? They hide it, the kuffar? I bet you the the American, they are behind hiding the rock. I cannot, I cannot see the rock. Where is the rock? I see Walmart. 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 Where is the rock? Keep looking. I mean, I have a satellite and I cannot find the rock which Musa he found so easy. But I think you know. I think Musa he was uh, using a drone or something. You know, like a, 
those uh, drone you buy them from um, uh, Amazon, Amazon.com. Uh, there's a rock here. No. Why is no rocks? Where is the big rock? I give up. I give up. Okay, you guys, you find the rock. Okay, okay, take your time. So anyway, so he keep uh, walking, keep walking until he found the rock, and then next to the rock, he did what? Let us see what he did. Oh. Uh, hmm. Okay, until they reached the rock and they rested there. Moses, I mean, look, by the way, like, it's not like they reach a rock, it's big brown, look different. No, 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 until they reach the rock. It's the rock, it's, it's known. I mean, come on, everybody know the rock. I mean, like, come on. Like you say to somebody, where are you going? I say, I go into Bahrain. Ah, uh, okay, I meet you in the rock. Oh, sure, I will meet you in the rock too. There's only one rock in the world, man. So easy. Anyway, so until they reach the rock, Moses put his head down and slept. Look at this idiot. Why you put your head down and you sleep? Can't you put your head up and sleep? Shame on you, Moshe. He's doing maybe a trick or something. Okay, he bit his head down. Sufyan, the sub narrator, he's a sub narrator. I mean, look at this religion. There's narrator, sub narrator, submarine narrator. And then said somebody other than Amr Said, at the rock there was a water spring called Al Hayat. Here we have to stop. There's a water spring called the life. And none, none, okay, do you see the word none? When I was learning English, I was like saying to myself, what's wrong with this? Like none. You know, they told me that a, a woman, she, uh, you know, she surrendered herself to God. They call her none, none. And then none submit to any what's I know so I'm seeing all these all these yeah you know anyway you know okay so just let it go you know and so a nun come in touch with the water but become a life brother deep that's deep you touch the you don't drink the water you don't even need to drink it you touch it touch it touch it just touch 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 that not here leave my this don't touch me I said touch the water what's wrong with you so you touch the water. And right away, he will become alive. Like, hold on. How he touched the water and he's dead. So the dead, he touched the water and he became alive. Hey, dead man, go touch the water. I'm dead, you idiot. I cannot move. So a nun touched the water, but became alive. Okay. So some of the water of the spring, look now he's the details. He, now he explained the questions and he gets me busted because I said, how the dead one can touch the water? Look, he refuted me. And some of the water that is spring fell over the fish. That's it. There's no excuse not to believe now. It's a clear. So some of the water of the spring fell over the fish. So it moved like weak, weak. Weak, weak, and they, they slipped out of the basket. Look at this, and enter the sea. <whistles> this is what happened to you when you walk next to the fountain of youth. Here we go. You lost your sardine. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, and the story continue. You can read the hadith by yourself. It's a long story, and this is again in Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number four two. Uh, four seven sorry two seven all right so now this is who this is Moshe and by the way one of the comment he said that Allah he created this child as a kafir when al Khadr slew him because Allah wanna teach him a Moshe, Moshe a listen you idiot Allah he created that child like a mice for laboratory to teach so Allah, he created children so he can put them for us and we kill them so we can learn. What a stupid religion, man. So now this is the story of Moshe and the fountain of youth, as you see. Now, I'm not going to go to Jack Sparrow and discuss how Jack Sparrow, he was very evil trying to get the fountain of youth himself alone. And I'm not going to discuss how greedy they are. And here, like here, Jack Sparrow, you see, Jack Sparrow, he did not reach 
the fountain of youth by walking as you see he is using a boat but the story of prophet Moshe he was walking down the street la 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 la, la until he reached the island of Al-Bahrain how he crossed the sea don't ask Jack Sparrow he crossed the sea by a boat as you see and we have evidence and here Jack Sparrow you know uh, this is he trying to act like Moshe he put his head down and he lay down you know but all of us we knew Jack, Jack Sparrow uh, Sparrow this after he he broke his tooth you know remember when the guy from the ship he hit him in his tooth so he said he starts saying Jack Sparrow so here Jack Sparrow is running because they are chasing him because they want to get the ring of the the, the, the you know the compass uh, where you can find the you know the uh, the uh, you know the thing you know the thing you know so and then here look Jack Sparrow he's moving his hand supposedly he, he's trying to cross the jungle but in fact he is putting his, his hand in the front of the breast of this woman and this is exactly why Allah did not mention Jack Sparrow as a prophet because in Islam it is haram to put your hand over uh, next to the breast you have to hold them you cannot just put it in the front to hide them you have to hold them and you can you have to uh, suckle them it's halal so Jack Sparrow obviously is not a prophet. I mean if you are confused about it, I'm making it clear for you now. All right Now going back to the story in the tafsir We find that the fountain of youth is not only Something mentioned about Moshe and Al-Khudr We find that the fountain of youth have to do with Zul Qurnayn, The man with the two horns, Alexander the Great. If we go down here, let's see if we can I mean, I don't like this website how they design it <clears throat> Like they make it like a script inside the script. Let me see if I can open it in different webs uh, website. Hold on, let us see. <sighs> hmm. Okay. I will try to find it in different websites so we can open it better. We found it in Google Books. We don't want Google Books because we cannot use Google Translation. All right, we found the front website here. Let us see this one. Hold on, give me a second. Let me give you the link. You know, I will give you the link for the reference. Uh, so, uh, you can see uh, what we are talking about and you can use Google translation from your site this is other website other than the one I'm showing you in the screen so now let us go there <clears throat> all right so now we are opening the new website all right, so here it says they are asking you about Zul Qurnayn. This is a chapter 18, verse number 20, uh, 83. You're right. And then here we will see some uh, explanation about this person. It says here uh, that some of the people of the book, and obviously they are Jews, they ask Muhammad about uh, a man who going all around the earth. And then Muhammad, he says, I know nothing about him. Muhammad, he said, I know nothing about him. Let me open the website, uh, I mean, in, uh, using Google Translation, so we can read together. Uh, <clears throat> so reported that the Jewish say to the Prophet, uh, Oh, Muhammad, uh, let us go first. No, not here. Anyway, you can read this part. O oh, Muhammad, do you remember Abraham and Moses and, uh, uh, and, and you, you learn about them from us? Imagine the, 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 the Arabic says, and you learn about them from us, all right? Abraham, Moses, Jesus, the prophet, you heard, you heard of them mentioned from us. Do you see it? Muhammad, he never knew about them from us. 
Muhammad did not say to him, no, I did not hear about them from you. I heard from Allah. He keep mute. So tell us about the prophet of God that mentioned in the Torah except in one place. Muhammad, he said, uh, the, the Jewish guy, he said, who is, uh, uh, who is he? Sorry, uh, Muhammad, he said, who is he? Who is he? They said, Zul Qurnayn. He said, I have not heard anything about him. Do you see it? Until this moment, Muhammad, he is confirming that he heard nothing about him. And actually all the messengers before, the Jewish mentioned their names. And according to the story here, they mentioned Abraham, Moses, Jesus. He heard about them too from the Jews. And now they are saying to him, tell us about Zul Qurnayn. He is mentioning the Torah, and obviously the Jew is getting Muhammad busted because there's nowhere, you know, there's a prophet of God. His name is the man with the two horn in the Torah. So obviously here the Jew is trying to see how stupid Muhammad is, and he was successful. So uh, he said, I know nothing about him. I learned nothing about him. And then they went out happy because Muhammad, he could not answer. All right. But when they are leaving, brother, before you leave, the, they leave the door. Jibreel, he come down from the ceiling. And he told Muhammad the answer about Zul Qurnayn. He told him, I will tell you a remembrance of Zul Qurnayn. Oops, Muhammad, he fall into the trap. Muhammad, he fall into the trap. And then here Muhammad, he continue, telling the story about Zul Qurnayn. And there is a hadith actually, which is very funny, where Muhammad, he said, I am not sure if Zul Qurnayn even was a prophet or not. And here you ask yourself, what kind of a prophet he do not know if other prophet is a prophet or not? I mean, why he is so ignorant about the topic? How come he do not know? So the story continue. Let me see if I can find this hadith in English. Um, anyway, in here it says that Muhammad, he says, I am I, I'm not aware if he was a prophet or not in the translation in English in this website. So uh, anyway, the story continue. And now Muhammad is trying to get more details into us because supposedly the one who taught him now this is Allah. So this is a very confirmed uh, uh, the information to him by Allah himself. If we go down, and this is where I want to go with you, let us see. Where we will, because the, you know, the, 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 the text is so long and uh, all of it is really stupid stories. Uh, Okay. Yeah, it says here down. Let me see if I can find it without reading the whole thing. I will search for the word horn. All right. So he have two horns, okay? Zul Qurnayn, he have two horns. Let us see if we are in the right place. Hmm. Read carefully. When they asked him, they said, was he a prophet or a king? 
he said, was neither a prophet or nor a king, but he was a righteous servant of Allah. Okay? And Allah loved him. Hmm. Which is very weird. He is a righteous servant of Allah, and Allah loved him. Well, why Allah loved him? Let us see. And Allah advised him, so Allah spoke to him too. Now here, this, those hadith, they are like many contradict each other about if he is a prophet or not. Some they say he's a prophet, some they say he's not. Uh, as we showed even before, it said he is not sure if he was a prophet or not. So Muhammad, you don't know. Uh, anyway, he God, he sent him to his people and they beat him on his horn. But remember, Muhammad is not sure if he is a prophet or not, but he is sent by Allah to warn the people. But this is mean he's a prophet and he's a messenger. If Allah, he sent him. I mean, you see how stupid the story? If Allah sent him to his people to warn them to convert to Islam and to believe in Allah, well, doesn't that make him a messenger of Allah? Very stupid story. And then, so he came to the people, said to them, convert to Islam, brother, and say shahada. His people did beat him, and, uh, uh, you know, he died. And then God, he revived him, revived him uh, for their jihad, you know, to go against them. Then he sent him to his people again, and they beat him again. And then another horn came from his head after he died. So here they explain to you why Alexander the Great, he have two horns, why he's called Zulqarnayn. Because simply, he went to his people twice, asking them to convert to Islam. Each time they he speak to them, they hit him with a hammer in his head, and they, he have a horn and he died. Like, you know, he died. But there is a pimple coming from his head, this is the horn. And then after that, he start putting a hamama, which is, just, you see the shakes they put in the top of their head to cover the two horn because he looked like an ant or looked like an insect. Unbelievable story. And then Allah, he bring him back to life. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the story here continue. Let us see where we will, uh, where we will arrive. Hmm. Hmm, let us see. Oh boy. <laughs> I wish you guys, you, you know, you read Arabic because that will save me from all the hassle and this, you know, like a translation. Okay. Uh, let us search for the word green to save from reading all of this. Green. Uh, look like translation is different. Let us see. Search for the word water. Okay. Here we arrive to the story of Al Khadr. So you will see that this man and the Muslim, they try to deny that he is Alexander the Great. They keep saying to us, he is not Alexander the Great. Here you will see that he built the city, it's called Alexandria. He built the city, it's called Alexandria. And uh, when he was, uh, after he built Alexandria, as we see here in Arabic, you can search in the in the Google translation so you can find where it says that for you your side it says here uh, he he came to the uh, 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 the seashore of Egypt and he built a city it's called Alexandria and then when he built it uh, Allah he sent him an angel Allah he sent him an angel and this angel uh, took him to the sky. Alexander the Great, Allah took him to the sky. And then Allah told him, do you see what is down below? Do you see what is down below? Isn't it amazing to know that Allah, he took Alexander the Great to the sky? He said, look down. 
and then he says, I see my city, and I see other cities with it. Then he took him up, and then he, he could not recognize the cities because they became so far, maybe. And then he saw, I see only my city, and I don't see any el anything else. And then the angel, he says to him, all this land is, uh, you see, uh, Allah, he gave you the authority to rule it. That's it. So go in it until you arrive where the sun set. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So Allah, he sent his angel and he took him up to the sky and he told him, keep going. This is all your land. You keep going, keep going until you arrive where the sun set. And then he walked until he found where the sun set and he found where and, 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 and keep walking until you find where the sun rise too, as it says here. All right. Then he arrived to a people and he found people who have faces their faces like face of dogs. They have actually not like Ujuhu Kilab. Their faces is face of dogs. So they are not a human, as I explained to you before. Their faces, if we go here in the, if you search in your page, if you translate Google translation, you can search for the word dog. All right. So uh, uh, after Allah, he took him up to the heaven and he showed him all the land which he is going to. Uh, you know, uh, to, to own or to control. And he told him, keep going until you arrive where the sun set, the place of the sun setting and the place where the sun rising. And then you find two mountain where you were going to build a dam uh, or, you know, suppose this he will build the dam in the story. And then he keep going until he found the cross to Gog and Mago and he found people who their faces uh, where dogs faces they are dogs okay but now we will find something different you see all the story until now we did not see anything yet about uh, the fountain of youth I mean where is the fountain of youth suddenly you will notice in the middle of nowhere that al khadr appear in the story remember we are talking about a person who is not exist in the time of Moses remember the story in the Quran uh, speaking about Moses meeting al khadr right but now we will find that al khadr he appear again in the story of Zul Qurnayn so, if you go here, you will see that Zul uh, he used to be go around. And then one day, he stood upon a mountain. It's called the Mountain of Adam. Uh, and then he found a guy, his name is Al Khadr. In that mountain. I don't know if we have any Muslims here are listening, because I found that this is kind of astonishing, stupid story. The Khadr, he said to him, and Khadr, he was a person who had been given knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Hey King, do you see that paper which is hiding from the palm tree? He said, yes. He said, this is where I was going to teach you about the location. What location? What is that? Maybe later we will understand more. And then he says to him, and Al Khadr was reading from a book, so Allah, he gave him a book. Remember, this is not Al-Khadr knowledge. This is a person who Allah gave him a knowledge. 
He said to him, uh, I see a book, it's written in it, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, hada kitabun min Adam abi al-Bashar, awsikum dhuriyati wa banati. So in the name of Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, this is a book written by Adam, the father of the human. I give you uh, like uh, uh, my will to take care of my children and my daughters and to be careful from my enemy and your enemy, which is Iblis, which means Shaitan. He is the reason to send me down from the Firdos, which is supposed to be the garden of Adam and Eve, to the land of the earth. And I win, I, I send down in this location. So this is where the palm tree was located. Allah, he dumped Adam there. And he said, uh, uh, like in this location, the one who look at it, he will find that I have uh, 200 years of sin by one look, which is very hard to understand, you know. Uh, so I've been sent there and I was, uh, let's say he was cursed by Allah and he dumped him in that location and he was, uh, if you look at that location, you will find that 200, uh, uh, maybe 200 like jail, like Allah, he put him there for 200 years because of one sin. And then he says he studied the earth and he studied the the, 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 mount, the the trees and he said and I did water this land from the tears of my ears. So repent to Allah. Okay. Now here the story is over. Zul Qurnain he read for him what he have in his book. And then Zul Qurnain he said uh, or he, he wiped the place where Adam used to sit. And when he did that it was, he found that it is a hundred uh, uh, and eighty mile. And he count the trees in that location, he found them nine hundred trees. From every tier of Adam, there was uh, uh, like a tree coming. And then when Cain and Abel, they killed each other, or they, or they killed one of the brother, killed the other brother, it became, those tears became a land. And this land cry blood. Hmm. I don't know how many Muslims are listening. Muslims, what is the distance between Alexander the Great as date, as time, and between Moses? This guy, Al Khadr, he exists everywhere. Al Khadr, he is with Noah. Al Khadr, he is with Alexander the Great. Al Khadr, he is with Moses. And actually, there's some reports saying that even he was in the funeral of Muhammad. Even there's a hadith says that when uh, Alexander, oh sorry, when uh, when uh, Muhammad was talking to a bunch of people, somebody came in, and when he left, he says to them, "This is Alexander the Great." Uh, sorry, he is. This is uh, Al Khadr. And you know, the Muslim they can say this is weak and this is strong. But as you see, all of this is written in their books. All of those things is exist in their books. And if we continue reading, you will die laughing because the stories can get even more complicated. Here you see, uh, even the Muslims struggling, trying to find out why he was called Zul Qurnayn. As an example, he says, the reason he was called Zul Qurnayn, because he, he gathered the two horn of the sun set and the sunrise here it says the reason he was called a Zulqurnayn because he arrived to the horn of the sun now you might be wondering what the horn of the sun Muhammad himself he confirmed that the sun has a horn and actually Muhammad he confirmed that Satan he come from between the two horn of shaitan And maybe I have to stop here because that video will go forever if we read the whole thing. And maybe we can continue later. So if we read here, let us see. As you see, Muhammad is beyond recognition of, of, uh, of, of science. Muhammad is the biggest science, a scientist. So 
Muhammad, uh, uh, he believed that shaitan, he have horn. And the same Muhammad believed that Zulqarnain have a horn, two horns. Shaitan has two horns, Zulqarnain have two horns. As you see. And Muhammad, he said something very funny. I don't know why the Muslim did not translate it here. See, translation is gone. He said, don't pray when the sun rise. And don't pray when the sun set. Okay, why? Let me see if I can find it in different translation, a different hadith. All right, here we go. We found it in a different one. Why? Read carefully. Aisha, may Allah pleased with her, said. Umar, may Allah pleased with him, said. It's not correct, rather, the message of Allah only for a bit. He said, don't, uh, don't seek a prayer when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting. Uh, for it is the rise between the horn of shaitan. So when Zulqarnain he arrived where the sun set, and he arrived where the sun rise, he arrived to the two horn of shaitan. Because the sun rise from between the two horn of shaitan, and the sun rise from between or set. Uh, from between the two horn or between the two horn of Satan and here we find this uh, kind of very not only stupid uh, there's a contradiction uh, because if the Sun is sitting between the two horn of shaitan and because of that I don't I should not pray to Allah at that moment what this had to do with Allah prayer and you know what I mean I mean let us say for the sake of argument Okay, this is a story reporting a true event. There's a shaitan. Let us draw Mr. Shaitan. He have two horn. Hmm. This is Mr. Shaitan. And now the sun is sitting between his two horn. Let us make the sun with the uh, green color so we can appear all red. So the sun now is going down between the two horns of Shaitan. Why the Muslim cannot pray to Allah? What is the connection? What is the reason? What is going to happen if we pray to Allah while the sun is sitting between the two horns of Shaitan? Any Muslim can tell us? There's any Muslim can help us? Who is a Muslim have an answer for this? The sun now is sitting between the two horns of Shaitan. And by the way, this is what NASA found, right? So, why I cannot pray at that moment? What will happen? Any Muhammadan? Is that just a stupid superstition stuff and crazy stuff? Fiction, people believe in it? Or this is a true thing? Was Muhammad informed by Allah that there is something dangerous will happen to the Muslims if they pray at that moment where the sun is sitting between the two horns of shaitan or when the sun is rising from between the two horns of shaitan? Any Muhammadan? You know, I wish I can finish all the reading, but as you see, this is very long, and that will take me really for long to finish it. And I'm trying to make my videos shorter. But as you see, the fountain of youth is exist in the time of Muhammad, sorry, in the time of Al Qadr. And later we will find it exists in the time of Zulqarnain. And we will find that Zulqarnain, he went all the way trying to find uh, 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 the fountain. And we find that Zulqarnain and Musa, Moshe or Moses and Al-Khadr, they make like a three comedian 
uh, who they like they are con like uh, they make a kind of a fiction story and this fiction story is endless and the Muslims when they say that you know I mean when a Muslim is sheikh he come to us with these stories. The question is, where he got these stories from? And by the way, this is, exists even in the book of Ibn Kathir. And exists in many, many books. Uh, but let me, <coughs> before we finish, Maybe we can go to the part where he speak about the fountain of youth. Let us see. Let us go back to the page. At least we can complete the topic, you know. <clears throat> Let us see. Tons of fiction stories, stupid stories, none of them make sense. But why I'm not surprised? Very normal. This is what Islam is about. Um, let us see. All right. Here we find the part where they are talking about the fountain of youth. Let us clean the screen from the drawing. And then we go to the Google translation. Just give me a second. So if you have the page in your side and you, you click at Google Translation, you can search for this word, closes. You see it? And then you will find the part because as you see, the, 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 it's not a page, it's almost like the whole book is there. So uh, the story is saying that they arrive to a, a water well or a spring of water. Uh, let us see here. Al Khadr before he said to him, and you can go read before from the beginning, actually a little bit more. You will see talking about how many soldiers he have, uh, uh, you know, that Zul Qurnain in each place he go, he stay for two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two uh, sorry, 12, 12 years. You see, each time he arrived to a place, he stay in that place for 12 years until he arrived where the sun set and then he camped and he gathered his soldiers and uh, uh, and then it says um, uh, the soldiers they said to him and the and the, the, the scars his scars they told him uh, you know we are afraid of this darkness like the the, the bath you are taking uh, and uh, we, we seek you not to go in the path where nobody went before uh, the path of darkness don't take us there don't uh, don't uh, don't take us in the path of Adam blah 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 you know and then they keep talking about it here and then uh, the story continue uh, and then uh, he keep walking and, he, and then he saw a lot of females uh, He saw horses and they told him there's horses. He looked, 
He says, where is the horses? He says, females. He said, what females? He says, the virgins. So he chose six thousands of female uh, uh, virgin horse. And then he chose from his soldiers six thousand. I mean, I know like when you are reading this, that's nothing makes sense, right? But I mean, this is what it is, what we can do. Like sometimes people, they say to me, I mean, your translation is really confusing. My friend, it's not my translation confusing you. The story is confusing. The story is stupid. What can I do? So if I say to you, uh, 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 6,000 virgin female horse, you would say virgin female horse. You might think I'm making a mistake, but this is what it is. What I would do. Uh, and then he chose 6,000 of his men. And then he made the al Khudr a leader of 2,000 of them. Okay, but in the translation, for some reason, the word al khadr is not coming. You know, so he oh here we go. It says actually, and he gave al khadr uh, the command of two thousand horsemen. All right, so al khadr now became a leader in the army of Zulkarnain. And while al khadr he was walking, Zulkarnain came to him. From his house, and Zulkarnain, he, uh, uh, he, you know, he he went down to the house of Al Khadr, and while the Khadr he was walking in darkness. I mean, look at the connection. How he is in the uh, house, and now he is walking in the darkness. Don't ask me. So he, you, you know, he was walking in darkness, and the people they went away from him, and then he th uh, throws some. Uh, 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 like uh, like a dice, you know, made it from like a ruby, something like this. He throw it, and it fell in the edge of water spring. See the translation. He says "I," because in Arabic it says "Ain." Uh, so it, uh, it it fell in the edge of a water spring. All right, and that is supposedly where we go to the point where he uh, he got to the place of the fountain. So obviously Al Khadr he went there, or he was there for a reason. Uh, he want to give wisdom, advice uh, to uh, Zulkarnain, and somehow you will find here that Zulkarnain is Allah. And actually, I will make a short video. To prove to you that Zulkarnain is Allah. I know that Muslims will go crazy, will say this is not true. Even the Quran says he is our servant. But you will see how we prove it easy that obviously Zulkarnain is Allah himself. Based on the story which Muhammad he said. So uh, the story continues. Actually, if we go and read in different books, there's many books speaking about those things, which all of them is funny and stupid, even more stupid than those stories here. We will find, let me see if I can find you something else. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, here actually we see more details. Let us see, hold on. See here, there's a part is not mentioned in this page. It's not appearing. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe it's there, but I did not see it. Yeah, maybe he al Suyuti he took it off. It says here that when he arrived, when he threw the ruby or that thing in his hand, and he arrived to the edge of that uh, fountain. When Al Khudr he said to him, "You are seeking a bath of the of, of darkness, and this bath many of us cannot see. So what you will do with the darkness, which means how you can walk through it? Uh, 
if we like you know let's say we walk and we don't see our way etc uh, and then al khudr he gave zulqarnain a red ruby and he said to him if you arrive to the darkness throw this ruby in the ground if this ruby or if the ground if the if the ground is green then uh, those who they are in the darkness they have to come back so Zulqarnain, he took it and he went all right he took the ruby and al khudr he noticed what Zulqarnain he want what he want he want the fountain of youth uh, and Zulqarnain, he is hiding you know what he in his heart he want he did not tell al khudr that i am seeking to find the fountain of youth so he keep walking keep walking and then he thought that the fountain of youth let me actually let me use google translation i will post this link for you so you can open it from your side too give me a second you see it's islamic you know when we talk about islamic reference you will find that islamic reference is 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 a, is a messed up uh, reference is thousands and thousands of stories and the more you learn about them the more you die laughing let me give you the link here you can open the same link and you can click at google translation as you see and then you can read with me what i am uh, reading all right let us see yeah so <clears throat> So Zulqarnain, in the time of Al-Khadr, he's trying to find where, uh, where is the uh, fountain of youth. And actually, uh, even if you go in the title, if you translate, let us, let us see if we translate the, thing, the whole thing. Click at the side of the page, translate to English. You'll find the title saying, read with me carefully. The story of Zulqarnain and his request for the eye of life in the darkness. So here you get the whole story. What this what this is, what this uh, uh, report is about. Uh, Zulqarnain he wanted to find the fountain of youth. Zulqarnain all his trip, all his mission all his fight all his wars alexander the great for one simple reason he want to find the fountain of youth i will let you read it all i mean this is endless as you see you can search you can do your own study you can make notes sadly most of you do not know arabic but those who know arabic they will enjoy it more because they can read the original text but as you see this is the most stupid cult ever come to existence it's not only it's a collection of fairy tales of the old or the ancient, but it is stupid fairy tales. And suddenly the stupid fairy tales became part of a book, it's called Quran. And suddenly the fairy tales of the ancient, which is a fairy tale for the kids, became a book of God and became God talking and God teaching. And then there's billions of people they believe in such a stupid story. So here you will see that they are discussing how Zulqarnain that the scholars of the of the people, the Muslim scholars, who study the books, trace back how Zulqarnain was working hard trying to find the eye of life which means the spring of you know in arabic the word ain is i i but uh, when you put i or water next to it it make it eye of water which means spring of water so zulqarnain trying his best to find it zulqarnain when he lived forever uh, al-khudr he was here he was there uh, for a reason 
And obviously Al Khadr he don't want him to find it in some stories. Like Al Khadr he wanna keep the eye of found, the, the fountain of youth only for himself, for his own use, so he can stay alive forever. Obviously, uh, uh, Al Khadr he is against anyone to find this fountain. He don't want uh, Zulkarnain to find it because that will make him alive. And this is how the Muslims explain uh, how and why Zulkarnain is not alive forever, but Al Khadr he is alive, alive forever. So I will, I will stop here because the story is endless, as you see. But just I wanted to share with you things, you know, we don't mention always. And uh, the difficulty part of this thing, of those stupid stories, is the English translating to your language. But thanks to Google translation, maybe you will not get the perfect translation, but you get the idea. And the idea is very simple. Islam is a superstition, stupid cult. Everything about it is nothing but superstition. By a man, he claimed to be a prophet of God. But ask yourself, can really a prophet of God who spoke to his God or his God, he in, in, inspire him, he come with such stories? And if the Muslim, they will say to you, all oh, those stories are not in the Quran. My friend, they are in the Quran. As you see, this is the Quran in the Quran. He found where the sun set, he found where the sun rise. So when those scholars, they are coming to you with the stories and most of it is coming either from your prophet or from his companions. And speaking about this person, he arrived, entered, he found where the sun set and where the sun rise. That is in the Quran. And then the Muslims, in order to avoid the disaster and the stupidity of the Quran, they say, oh, he, uh, uh, you know, uh, he did not really uh, say, the verse does not say he found where the sun set. No, he did not say that it, the sun set in murky water. This is how it appeared to him. Anyone see the word appear to him? Anyone see the word he thought? It is Allah who is talking. The Jews, they asked the man, Tell us, they asked Muhammad, tell us about Zulkarnain. Muhammad, he said, and we show you the interpretation saying, I know nothing about him. Then Jibreel came to him right away. And Muhammad, and by the way, some story says it took him a few weeks. So that's the story of right away is very funny. So Jibreel told him, and now Allah is talking. Allah is the one mentioning here, says, until he came to the rising place of the sun. Where is the rising place of the sun? The sun rises everywhere. You do not need to go anywhere to find the rising place of the sun. That is stupid to say. So when they try to explain, they try to say to you, oh, this is how he, it's, it's, he, he it looked like, you know, he saw it rising, uh, but it's not really, but you know, hold on. It says, until he came to the rising place of the sun. So here there's two things. There's timing and there's location. And he found it rising on a people. He found people near it. And then if you continue, you will find that this guy, he continue before it actually, where he found where the sun sitting. And when he reached the sitting place of the sun, it's a, it's a place he reached. What happened there, the, sun, the sunset? He found it, it's, it's, Allah is not saying he thought. You see, Allah is reporting the story. He found it, he report a find. Not he thought. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us, the Quran is an amazing language. So can't Allah he use instead of he found, he thought? Is Allah like, is your God Allah stupid? If he want to say he thought, he will say he thought. He did not say he thought, he says he found it. And even the city Muhammad himself, he confirmed that the sun set in a murky water. Was Muhammad unaware and he have wrong understanding of the verse too and you Muslims you have better understanding isn't it this is your prophet saying that and here I need to ask a very simple question is that the same water where the fountain of youth is you see all this video is to come to an end remember the Quran speak about where the sun set. It said, it said what? You see, the Muslims, when they try to to, uh, to fabricate answer, they say, oh, it's a, the, like when you see the sea, the sea, when the sun set in the sea, the guy, he saw, he thought it is the sea in where it goes inside. It says here, spring, spring, spring. The sea is not a spring. It's so clear. 
It is the sea is not a spring of water. And if you Muslim you claim that Allah you speak perfect Arabic as you claim, then Allah he uses stupid language to say spring of water if it is a sea. Because a spring of water is something small. It's a spring of water. All of us we know it's spring of water. So here the sun set in the spring of water. The spring of water is where the fountain of youth. The spring of water is where Al Khadr in the story we showed you is seeking to find. Are you seeing the connection we are trying to do? The reference we showed you from uh, uh, Tafsir al Suyuti and other Tafsir, as we saw here, hmm? this Tafsir here is to lead us to one thing that Zulkarnain was trying to seek an eye of water, a spring of water. Zulkarnain, he arrived to the eye of water. And the Quran confirmed that, and he found there the sun sitting there. Al Khadr, he drank from the fountain of water. And he did live forever because he drank from the fountain of your water. Al Khadr, he gave him a ruby, and he said, When you arrive at the darkness, Al Khadr, he don't want him to keep walking to find the fountain. Or let us say he found it, but he, could, he did not dare to continue walking because it became so dark. So he gave him a ruby, he says to him, when you arrive to the darkness, throw it in the ground. And if the ground scream or something like that, you back up, you go back. So all the stories lead us to one thing. This is a cartoon. This is cannot be from God. And when the Muslim try to defend their cult by saying all kind of fiction stories, that the Quran never say the sun set in murky water. Actually, uh, if you if you search right now in uh, uh, in Google, in YouTube, sorry, you will you will see how many Muslim volunteer doing their best trying to fix the stupidity of the Quran. <clears throat> Let us see. This is an old video. The other point that William Campbell raised was regarding Surah Kahf, chapter number 18, verse number 86, that Zulkar name sees the sun setting in murky water, in turbid water. Imagine sun setting in murky water, unscientific. Imagine. The Arabic word used here is, it is wajada, meaning it appeared to Zulkarnain. Oof, 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 oof. William Campbell knows Arabic. See, this guy, he don't speak Arabic, by the way, he became expert in Arabic. The word there in Arabic, wajada, uh, wajada, it mean appear? The word wajada, we can go right now to the dictionary. The word wajad means he found, and even actually the Islamic translation, not even one of them says it appeared. It says, it says he found it. So this is the stupid Zakir Naik. They ask him how in the world it says he found it. He says found it. That doesn't say found it. It says wajadaha. Wajadaha means it appeared to him. But all of you, you can go right now to the verse, and you can copy the word. Hmm? This is the word wajadaha. And you can take it to Google Translation. Actually, you know what? I can do this in the front of you. I can use Google Translation uh, in the front of your eyes to the same page without even copying anything. You know? Like, you open the page here with Google uh, Browser, and we have the original translation in English in the right side and the Arabic. So what we do, we click here, translate to English, and then this verse, verse number 86, will be translated. Let us see what Google translation will be. Is it going to say it appear, or it says going to be founded? But we do not even need to do so. It says here, even he found it sitting in a spring of black water. So how in the world, the word he found it became, according to Zach and Naik, it appeared to? Do you see how dummy, how stupid, how desperate their answers are? And this is what happened when a person he defend Islam. Whatever he say, nobody oppose. 
If it is me who said the word wajadaha, mean uh, appear, you will see a Muslim making tons of thousands of videos saying Christian Prince is lying. But as long as Zakir Naik is the one lying, and the lie purpose is to defend Islam, it's okay. Murky water, in turbid water. Imagine sun setting in murky water, unscientific. The Arabic word used here is, it is wajada. <laughs> meaning, it appeared to Zulkarnain. Meaning, the word wajada, meaning. <laughs> And with this, I wanted to say thank you guys for being here. I hope that you found where the sun set today. And I hope that you guys, you get some more clue about where to find the fountain of youth. So all of you, you can grow young again. And you can be a very uh, a handsome, good looking uh, like me, Alhamdulillah. And you can be young like me, Alhamdulillah. And, uh, uh, you know, I wish I can share with you some of the water of Zul Qurnayn, uh, the fountain of youth. But you know what? I made an agreement with the director of Jack Sparrow movie that I will not tell any information about the location where we did our movie. So, uh, because they, they will sue me, honestly. I mean, we have a contract. I can show it to you. They, they made me sign a contract that I will never, not only me, not only me, by the way, all those who work in the movie of Jack Sparrow, the part of the Caribbean, we sign uh, an acknowledgement that in no way we will tell anyone where the fountain of youth is, especially women. I mean, no way. I mean, like, your mother-in-law now she is 90, and soon might she might go. And now she go drink the fountain of youth, and she now she is 16 again. A good luck with that. So they made a sign that says, specifically, you don't tell women. Specifically. Okay? And uh, because, you know, like, there's a lot of women here. Sorry, I cannot share. You know, I mean, if if you are just men, I mean, we can share with you that. You know, uh, and by the way, as I can like, as long you know the meaning of the of the verse and you know Arabic, do you speak Arabic? And as long you know Arabic very well, you idiot. Was your prophet an idiot himself? He did not know where the sun set. He did not. How come your prophet? He did not say. <laughs> he found it. He he thought. He said it's set in a spring of warm water. Even your prophet, the prophet of the Abdul, the biggest Abdul, Abdul number one in the world. So my friends, thank you very much for being here. And I know now many women, they will be upset from me because I'm not going to tell you where is the water. Please forgive me. I made a promise. And uh, however, if you are a woman who knows how to make baklava, we can discuss different conditions. You know, like if we make an agreement, you supply me with baklava for the rest of my life, every day. Huh? Then I might think about telling you, you know, to get like maybe like little, little, little tiny, maybe a few drops of water. We'll make you like maybe 40, 45, 50 years younger, you know. But you have to sign, like we have to go to the lawyer and, uh, you know, appear before the judge, you know, Judge uh, Huri Buter. And, uh, you know, you, you, you hold the ring of the, uh, you know, even the Lord of the Ring is in the, in, in the Quran and in the Hadith. Go and read the stories about the Lord, the, the ring of Solomon. You would die laughing. Actually, I say to you that number one stupid chapter in the Quran, which nobody can beat it, is chapter 18. Flying carpet of Suleiman, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Suleiman, he, you know, I mean, uh, uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Not only about Al Khadr, the seven sleepers, you know, you name it. You know? Look at this story. Look how beautiful it is. You know, look at this. Look. This is the most funny stories ever. Chapter 27 uh, 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 and, and chapter 18 are the ones who they are really very, very funny and very stupid. And actually here, uh, uh, just to show you one thing here, the stupidity. In chapter 18, there's a first which I find very, very amusing. Uh, they ask Muhammad, those who they are, the you know the Christian they speak about, 
those who they been chased by an infidel king they want to kill him kill them because they became a Christians how many they are how many I mean very simple question he's not asking them science how many they were so Muhammad now he don't know really what he is going to answer he don't dare to say anything so look what he said he said Allah told me the following some they say they were three and their dog is number four and some they say they are five and their dog is number six guessing the unseen yet others they say they were they were seven and their dog is number eight okay now Allah will give you the answer so, oh Muhammad say only Allah knows their true number <laughs> what the heck so what the purpose of this verse they are asking you how many they are so the coward Muhammad he is afraid to say the number and then he will get wrong they will get him busted so some they say they are four, three and their dog is number four some they say they are five and their dog is number six some they say they are six and their dog is number seven some they say they are seven and their dog is number eight and then the answer is okay Muhammad tell them Allah knows best and not only that he says only Allah knows their num numbers and then and none knows them but few like what the heck so what is the what is the number I mean what is this complication all is about just tell them the number he don't know he's afraid to tell them the number of people will laugh at him the story name you eat is it's called the seven sleepers I mean isn't it obvious what is the what is the story what is the number it's called the story the name of the book the seven sleepers and Muhammad is still he don't dare to give the answer and as long there's a few people they knew okay tell us what the numbers because already it's not a secret I mean what is the big deal are we going to tell us about nukes is that like you will, will unveil, uh, unveil the location of the fountain of youth tell us then even this one Muhammad he cannot answer and here you see a mistake in the Arabic he says that uh, some they say they are three and their dog is number four have you ever heard in any language somebody says three and their dog is number four actually it doesn't say number four and the fourth and the fourth is the dog you don't say the fourth is a dog he is not a human you say three and one dog in no language you say such a thing this is stupid Muhammad he considered the dog is a human the fact even the word here Kalbahum is false written in Arabic. The original word is Kali'ahum. Kali'ahum. In the story which is written by an Aramaic Syrian uh, bishop, uh, I believe his name is Jacob Yaqub. In this story, it says that there is, it's a fiction story. It's about a, a group of guys who run away from uh, a king just because they became a Christians and they hide for their life in a cave and then God he sent an angel and that angel was Kali'ahum not Kalbahum so the stupid uh, Muhammad instead of saying getting the word Kali'ahum he said Kalbahum either Muhammad was the fool or the one who wrote the Quran from Muhammad he got it wrong because of maybe the way it's written close to each other Kali'ahum simply is the one who provide them this is why you see that this according to the verse here in the Quran this dog he opened his two arms have you ever heard of a dog have two arms hmm? since when dogs have four legs Muslims so the original story speaking about an angel who covered the gate of the cave this is in chapter 18 verse number 18 who covered the gate the, the cave by his wings he opened his arms so he opened his arms not the dog stretching his fourth his two four leg whatever and by the way, where is where how the how the translation come to the fourth his two le four legs? Where how in the world it, in Arabic it says Basiton Dira He opened his two arms. 
So the original story in the Aramaic, it says that this angel, Kali Ahom, Kali Ahom, he, their provider, he, he give them food, he protect them. So God, he sent this angel to protect them. This is why the army could not get, go, get, get close. I mean, have you ever heard of a king send an army to kill a bunch of guys? And then because they saw a dog in the cave door, they run away. I mean, how stupid the story can be. Imagine that Trump, he sent the CIA to capture Osama bin Laden or, the, or ISIS leader, Caliphate. And then they saw a dog, and then the, 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 the special American force, they went back home and they could not capture or kill ISIS leader because there was a dog in the cave door. Who in the world would believe in such a thing? Even, by the way, even in the Islam Islamic interpretation, many they believe that the original word is Kali'ahum, not Kalbahum, which means it is an angel. Maybe we can uh, make a video about it. We should. <clears throat> Uh, let us see, hold on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And the funny, even Muslims, by the way, acknowledge that there is must be an error. Uh, in the in the Quranic text, <clears throat> this see, hold on. Anyway, I can make a video about it. Uh, see, I, I, I said half hour ago, I have to go. And I said to you, bye-bye, everybody. And be, I believe, can you believe it? That's why I don't want to go live no more. I will make short videos and pause them. Because the short video we are talking about already now is 1 hour 32 minutes. Do you see how short it, it is? It's very short. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And uh, I really appreciate having you. I hope when we go live... If you like me to keep, you know, to keep coming live, you invite more people and you share the links, and more people they join us, so more Muslims will leave Islam. Uh, in the same time, I will start posting short videos, but I will I will mostly post them in the Arabian Prophet account. In the Arabian Prophet account, the reason I noticed that YouTube took almost almost twenty to thirty thousand subscribers from my account because I did not use it for a while. And here I wonder how in the world they do that. So the account, I think it was almost 100,000 subscriber. And now maybe it is 70 something, you know. So uh, I'm going to start posting the short videos in the Arabian Prophet. Maybe the admin can post for you the, uh, the Arabian Prophet account and you can subscribe there. And I will make a video to tell you that I'm going to post short videos there so we can keep that account alive. Uh, you know, this is what YouTube does. I mean, even when I go, before I leave the, the live streaming, it says to me, as an example, current view is 10,000. But after we close, you will find it says 6,000. See? There is something always fishy with this uh, YouTube thing, you know? Uh, current view now is 1,000, sorry. And then it says uh, the total playback is 8,165. Uh, uh, so it should appear 8,165. Let us see when I'm done. Check, check and see what the number will be. And then you will find it's like 6,000 or maybe 5. So how the 8,000 switch to, eight, to, to, to 5,000 or 6,000? You know? Uh, people subscribe and then they come again, they found themselves unsubscribe. And obviously they did something to my other account, the Arabian Prophet, 
from more than a hundred thousand now I have I think uh, last time I look it was maybe 70 something I forgot how, how much how many uh, so we will start posting uh, in the Arabian profit account short videos uh, and please subscribe to that channel so you can join us in the short videos and then maybe I will go live in this one so still we will use both all right we will see anyway I want to say thank you guys for being here and I hope all of you you found the location of the uh, fountain of youth even though I was trying my best to hide my GPS so none of you will find where is the location of the fountain of youth because I live very close to it and actually all my neighbors are very young especially the ladies of my neighbors I give them water from the fountain of youth in, in exchange of an agreement they cook for me and they make salad one she makes salad one she clean the house uh, one she clean my car and the other one she go and do shopping for me and uh, the other one she wash dishes in exchange of giving them some water from the fountain of youth and for sure those ladies are very happy because finally they do not need to use makeup they are so good looking now and they feel so young for real you know and their husband this is the only problem their husband looks so old compared to them and now they are thinking of divorcing those husbands because they don't match I mean come on you marry your husband 40 years ago and now he's maybe 60 years old and now like look what you know you are 17 years old like, come on you're not going to stay with somebody who's 16 60 hello yeah, you know and I told them why you don't give a drop of water to your husband they said no way we need a new husband enough is enough so anyway they are free to do things you know they have their own way of thinking a lie give a freedom for the women brother Allah protect women freedom women rights Islam provide women rights yeah and one of the rights favorite rights is Allah will allow the Muslim men to beat them this is a right for you to be beaten by a man very wonderful Alhamdulillah thank you very much may the Lord bless you all and I will see you soon again maybe tomorrow Christ is Lord Islam made by a dummy for the dummy look for the fountain of youth and when you find it let me know take care